how to use the saturated line tool in Clip Studio Paint. It's tucked away a bit. It's via the figure tool. Just go to the figure, just click there. There are many other useful tools. And there is the last one, saturated line. And you've got five default settings there. Plus one I created earlier. Once selected, the icon in the toolbar changes. The key panels for this tutorial are Tool, Subtool, Tool Property and Subtool Detail, as well as Layer. And you can find those via the Window menu. Go to the Subtool panel. You'll find a vast number of options and settings. Let's explore some of those settings. Selecting different subtools, you will see different settings as well as different categories. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the first tool in the subtool panel. Each saturated line will be drawn on its own unique layer. But I want to quickly show you there's a number of options. So you can draw on an editing layer. So you can just keep drawing, 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 all on the current layer. You can also create your own saturated line layer, the default for this tutorial. Apply it nine times and you'll get nine layers. There is also a final option which you can just draw on an existing saturated line layer. For this tutorial, I'm going to go with the second option. Create new layers each and every time. Apply the saturated line with the current colour. So if it's red, it will be applied in red. Set the current colour to blue and it will be applied in blue. And there's a number of options that come with this toning, but I will cover that in a later video. There's just too many features to cover all in one video. Apply the saturated line again with the current settings. And you can see this time I'm using black. So I've got now red and black. I've got two layers. And of course, as layers, you can hide or delete them. Add another saturated line. You don't have to apply it uniformly. So you can actually see I can squeeze the layer there. A vector line appears. I'm going to show you more about that later. You now have three layers that you can manipulate. To use them as a normal layer, you will have to convert it to a normal layer. So if you go and try and transform that, it won't allow it. There is no pixel information to manipulate. Just go to Layer and Rasterize. The little icon in the layer panel vanishes. It's now a normal layer. The transform commands will now be available. You can now go to the edit menu and transform, apply mesh, scale, as well as rotate. I'm going to delete that. I don't want to keep it, but I wanted to show you that you can transform the designs. If you go to the second tool in the subtool panel, it has curve in its description. What that means is that it's a slightly different tool from the other four. There is a continuous curve involved. Here I will be using the figure category, but I will go over the continuous curve in another video. Select the top subtool scattered saturated line and you can change the figure so I'm going to go instead of a circle I'm going to use a rectangle don't have to I'm just but I'm showing you for example instead of the default hold down the command or control key you get this vector line which you can then manipulate so you can just go to each of those control points and then you can just move them around distort the vector so the lines zoom in in a different way. The smaller the square, the closer the lines are to the center. You can also move one of the control points away from the center and then you can see the lines just vanish. 
Having the point away from the centre reduces the lines. You can also manipulate that central point as well, which has got like a curve attached to it. I will cover that more in future videos. Bending or moving the origin of the red line. You can bend the saturated line in numerous ways. A super useful feature. One to explore in a future video. If you change the rectangle into a circle in the settings, that only takes effect when you create the next saturated lines. The tool is not interactive in that way. It is not a live saturated line. You can change the control points, you can change the curve, but all the other things, just delete the layer and restart. The new saturated line layer uses a circle. You can see the saturated lines. Hold down the command or control key. You can see the control points for that circle. If I go to the figure category, I can't change that circle into a rectangle, which is a pity, but that's how it works. You can manipulate the control points, drag them in or out. The saturated lines follow that control point. Pull it in right into that central point. The lines are closer to the center. And also what you can do, you can scale it. So you can just pull it in and you can see you get some more of the lines. Drag it out for less lines. You can rotate it. All the saturated lines are rotated. It's interactive. You can also bend the curve to curve the saturated lines just as before. You can create all kinds of really beautiful sweeping curves using this approach. You can add control points to the vector design. Just right click at the point you want to add the new point or delete the point. If you are slightly away from the curve, it will not add the point. Slightly off and it won't be added. I can now add even more points. Then drag them out from the center or into the center to manipulate the saturated lines. Right click on there, add control point. Again, drag the point to manipulate the saturated lines. You can do this indefinitely, create all kinds of amazing, amazing designs. Now go over to the Subtool Detail panel. Select the Drawing Interval category. You can change the gap of the line. Reducing it down means more of the image is covered with those lines. The changes are visible in the little preview at the top of the panel. It doesn't change what's on the layer. I'm going to start afresh. So go to the Layer menu, Flatten Image, and then go to Edit Menu, Advanced Fill, and Fill with Black. Go to the Swatches panel, change the colour, apply a new saturated line. You see, now it's really intense, just because I've changed that gap. Keep changing the gap setting until you're happy with the number of lines it generates. Push the gap setting to a very large value, and then you will get very, very few lines in the display. Now, the gap setting can be used to create really intense designs, can be used to create frame designs, it can be used to create thin line designs, and much, much more. You can add some randomization by using the disarray setting. You can also tweak the grouping so it groups it more, groups it less. Push that up, push it down. You can also add some disarray to that as well. This is where the preview comes in. Really super useful because you can go through all the settings and you can see what you should get later on when you actually apply that layer. Now you can also go and change the color for the layer. So instead of orange, go for blue this time. You can now see two layers in the layer panel. Orange and blue. I'm going to show you some of the other settings that you can use. Go to the drawing position category and change the length to create super thin lines from the center. Change the gap from reference position to increase or decrease that central gap. There is also brush tip, brush shape and many more. You can also use the control points to make certain you see more or less of the underlying layers. So if you're on the blue layer, what you can do is you can drag the points out and then you can see more of the orange and maybe less of the blue. 
or the other way around. So you can manipulate them multiple times. Each layer has its own control points, so you can manipulate the control points to see more or less of the layer and the saturated line for that layer. You can now go to the layer menu and rasterize to create a more normal layer. Go to the filter menu and blur and Gaussian blur to blur that layer. Change the settings and then click OK. Of course you could use any of the other filters, such as the transform filters. You can then go to the file menu and export all the layers. Then you can manipulate them in applications such as Photoshop, Critter, Affinity Photo and many, many more. Change the colour for the saturated line to white. Go to the subtool detail panel. Go to the brush size category and brush size. Reduce the setting for very thin lines. Apply them. And you can buy more than one, so three, four, and they're all new layers. So if you don't like something, you can always delete it or just undo. Increase the size setting to increase the coverage of that white line across the layer. And now apply. Go to the ink category. You can change the opacity and blending modes. So you go for another color. I'm going to go for something like green. Change the blending mode, use darken, multiply, but I'm going to be using difference. Apply multiple saturated lines. Each of the newly created layers will have a blending mode of difference. Once you're happy with the super colourful design, what you can do, go to the layer menu and flatten image. Go to filter menu and then blur and Gaussian blur, etc. As mentioned, I'm going to explore more of the features of this wonderful saturated line tool in future videos. Hope you found this video of interest. Please subscribe to the channel. Always adding new tutorials about Clip Studio Paint and other applications. Also, please add some comments, a dislike or like. Thank you much.